both hyperventilation and altitude lead to hypoxemia. However, only hyperventilation will be accompanied by hypercapnia. They are good examples of type 1 and type 2 respiratory failure. Altitude is a pure type 1 respiratory failure, while hyperventilation is an example of type 2 respiratory failure with hypercapnia. Hypoventilation can occur in situations when you have general anesthesia on induction or neuromuscular disease such as the Guillain-Barre syndrome or you could have any situations of uh, hypoventilation such as um, trauma, um, situations like flail chest. Hyperventilation in essence uh, when you think of this, you have to think of the amount of um, or the volume of gas in a minute which is being turned over and changed in the alveoli. And this minute ventilation is um, a product of tidal volume, in plain English this is a breath, um, times by the number of breaths in a minute which is called respiratory rate. Now. To better understand how hypoxemia occurs in hypoventilation, we need to add on the transfer of gas equation, which is fixed equation, fixed law, which is diffusion um, is proportional to the surface area, the pressure gradient of a gas, the constant, and is inversely proportional to the thickness of the alveolar capillary membrane. In hyperventilation, the surface area is normal. The thickness of the alveolar capillary membrane is normal. The issue that will cause hypoxemia is the pressure gradient. Regardless of pathology, the body requires oxygen for metabolic processes and produces carbon dioxide. As oxygen is being used up and its pressures drop, this is being replenished by transfer of oxygen. As carbon dioxide is produced in the body, it needs to be eliminated and is being transferred from the capillary to the alveoli. The gases at the alveoli in the alveoli are being replenished by the minute ventilation. What I mean is that new oxygen is being brought in to the alveoli. Carbon dioxide is being taken out with each breath. In situations of general anesthesia, for example, the, the respiratory rate drops to zero due to the induction of general anesthesia and the installation of apnea. So the minute ventilation is now zero. What happens? Patient takes his lost breath, however, the metabolic processes still occur. As a result, your oxygen is being used up, so it drops in the capillary, and carbon dioxide is being produced. So it increases. The gas is being transferred from the alveoli, in, in essence oxygen, without being replenished. So what you will be left with a decrease in alveoli oxygen. And the same thing is true for carbon dioxide. Eventually, after a couple of minutes, the pressure of oxygen in the alveoli, it will be the same value. I'll just put an X. The same thing will be for carbon dioxide. It will be just, I will just put a Y. X minus X gives us zero. So the gas transfer will be zero. Regardless of the surface area, thickness and constant, the gas transfer will be zero. The same thing is true for oxygen and for carbon dioxide. After a couple of minutes, if we perform an ABG, we will be left with hypoxemia, which is partial pressure of oxygen below 60, and with hypercapnia, which is defined by a partial arterial pressure of carbon dioxide above 50. So, in essence, this would be a hypoxemia and hypercapnic state. The treatment for this is obviously ventilation and oxygen supply. We attend, we attempt to increase the alveoli pressure so a new gradient occurs in order for gases to be transferred. Similar to hyperventilation would be altitude caused hypoxemia during 
mountain climbing and we need to understand why this occurs. So the partial pressure at sea level, atmospheric, atmospheric uh, pressure, sorry, at sea level is around 760 millimeters mercury. The higher we climb on the mountain, this pressure drops for explanation purposes, let's just say 600 millimeters. That's how high you climb, that's the atmospheric pressure on the mountain. The fraction of oxygen from the air you will be breathing in is it will be unchanged. So 21% of the gas you're breathing in at sea level is oxygen. The same thing is true. 21% of the gas you're breathing in on the mountain is oxygen. The problem is that due to a lower pressure on the mountain, the partial pressure of oxygen, it will also be lower. At sea level, at this atmospheric pressure, the partial pressure of oxygen would be 159 millimeters mercury. At this atmospheric pressure, the partial pressure of oxygen would be something like 126 millimeters of mercury. If we extrapolate this to our alveoli content, obviously the alveoli, uh, the alveoli partial pressure of oxygen will be now lower will be lower than what it would be at sea level. The pressure gradient tending more towards zero. So less oxygen is available for transfer. But now let's have a look what's happening with carbon dioxide. Regardless of the situation, oxygen is being used up and carbon dioxide is being produced. But minute ventilation at altitude is normal or even higher because you're breathing faster, you're exercising, you're being hypoxemic. So because you are breathing faster, the minute ventilation is increased. So carbon dioxide is actually being washed out. You are left with a decrease in carbon dioxide because you are hyperventilating. So if we are to, per to, if we are to perform an arterial blood gas analysis on a mountain, you are left with arterial partial pressure of oxygen below 60, as in your patients, your mountain climbers are hypoxemic. But in terms of carbon dioxide, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is either normal or even low. Needless to say, the treatment would be oxygen administration as ventilation will not benefit the patient.